In the past few months, we've checked out a few of these retro gaming handhelds, and it's a delight to see they're getting better over time. Although we can't say the same for the official products, we can say there's never been a better time to be a retro gamer. Welcome to Team Mandori. Subscribe. Today's package is from Go Game Geek. Point. It was sent to us for review purpose, and as always, we're going to keep this as non-biased as we can. If you want to check their website out, links in the description down below. So the product we have today is the Ambernic RG353P. We have the usual box with six sides. This one has dashes of purple, as well as a dual OS. Apparently, it supports N64 and Sega Saturn. But the big question is how well? Over here we have a map, and then a barcode, as well as sticker stating 64 gigabytes. Ah, toilet paper. You can't afford toilet paper. So inside the bag, we have a handheld. And before we play, we need to take off its top. But don't forget four player. And this looks pretty nice. Other things included are a USB-C cable, a bent out of shape instruction manual. There's usually not much point in these, but if you're interested, it's yay big. It'll give you instructions how to add new games and hotkeys for the OS. This one is in English and Chinese. We're also given a screen protector, so if you use these, you don't have to go hunting down for one. Always use protection, kids. The device itself is based off the Super Nintendo control pad. There's a nice size 4.3 display in the center, and I'm a big fan of this symmetrical design. On the bottom we have stereo speakers, and a headphone jack in the center. We have two micro SD slots, and we're given two cards. A 16GB Kioxia for Linux, and a generic 64 for the games. Around the top we have four shoulder buttons, with a USB-C for OTG, a reset button, mini HDMI, volume rocker, and USB-C for charging. The D-pad is very similar to a Super Nintendo style, and the buttons feel a bit too small. They have a tactile touch, and there's a roughness to these buttons which I'm not a big fan of. The analog sticks down the bottom are very similar to a Nintendo Switch, and if you push them, you have an extra button. Smaller buttons you have function, power, and start and select. On the top we have two sets of shoulder buttons, and it feels like they've sandwiched two SNES pads together. You know what? This does actually feel a lot like a Super Nintendo pad. That is, outside the analog sticks and the gritty buttons. Now it's time for the size comparison. Today we're going to get out a tube of toothpaste. If you don't use toothpaste, we've also given you some tea bags. Checking the specs, we can see a fair bump in power from the earlier Ambenic models. The touchscreen and dual OS is also something that could hold a lot of potential. Let's see the boot time for Linux. One, two, three, four. I declare from war. Which animal always knows the time? A watchdog. What time is it when an elephant sits on a clock? Time to get a new clock. You will like the next one. Why did the girl sit on the clock? Because she thought it was John Luke. King of the massage. I am excellent in bed. Wow, 35 seconds. And then we're greeted with this very nice menu. It's very similar to what you'd expect from something like Batocera or Emuelic. This list is extremely customizable and we can hide anything we don't need. If you wanted to add games to this list, we could shut down, take out the micro SD, and use a computer to copy on files. Either way, as soon as this system arrives, it is actually ready to play. Just choose a game, and off you go. Pushing function key and B button, we can get to RetroArch. From here we can change many settings, such as controls, video, or audio, and we can also use save states. And to exit, function and start. To put it into sleep mode, we just tap the power button, and to turn it off properly, we go to shutdown system. Now to test another games. Asterix. Super Sidekicks 3. Alien Storm. Street Fighter 3, Third Strike. Ah, 
Battle Bakraid. Moving on to the computers, we have Lotus 2 on the Amiga. Even without frame skip, we're getting around 100% speed, but moving on to an AGA title, we're getting around 90%. Close, but not perfect. The usual gym power test shows that this system cannot quite handle all Amiga games, but if we add frame skip, we can speed it up a bit. But surprisingly, this system handles DOSBox very well. Command and Conquer, Red Alert. We did try Scum VM, but unfortunately it was having issues, I don't know. Here's Open Beta Rage. There's over 10 of these games pre-installed, and this one is Bare Knuckle Z. But remember we can add more to our list. Loom and the Secret of Monkey Island. And IK++. Moving on to consoles, first up is Contra on the NES. Mega Man X on the SNES. You might notice that it seems very slow and sluggish. If we use the function key in R2, we can see that it's at 50 frames per second. That's because it's using the European version of the game. If we use an American ROM, we'll get a buttery smooth 60 FPS. Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. The real GBA has an aspect ratio of 3-2, and as our display is at 4-3, it doesn't quite fill the screen. There are small bars at the top and the bottom, but I'm happy with this. F-Zero X. Out of the box, it's configured fairly well, but this is one of the easier games to emulate on the N64. If you want to kick it up a notch, we can try Killer Instinct Gold. Absolute arse. She does have a delicious backside, you Diddy Kong Racing. While it's quite nice to see DS games running quite well, we cannot use the touch screen in any of these emulators. Is Road Rash for the 3DO. It's not perfect, but it's definitely playable. Sega Rally Championship. Playable, but nowhere near 100%. Knuckles Chaotix. Capcom vs SNK2 Marvel vs Capcom 2 King of Fighters 11. While this game starts off poorly, it does speed up as we play the game. It's not 100%, but it definitely is playable. Tekken 3, PlayStation. Tekken 6, PSP. It runs well, but it looks ridiculous with this stretch screen. In the options, we should be able to change this, but as the touchscreen doesn't work, the only option is to either plug in a mouse 
or change the configuration file on a PC. So yeah, PSP does work, but the screen is pretty small. We also need the frame skip of 1 to have Outrun 2006 run at a reasonable speed. Here we have Broforce streaming from my main PC. It did run well for about a minute or two, and then the audio started to go out of sync. I'm unsure if that's the software on my PC, or the Moonlight software on this RG353. But if you wanted to test out a newer Linux firmware, you could download and install Jellos. It'll take about 10 minutes, and I reckon this is probably the base of what Ambernick are using. Let's move now to Android. From cold, it takes 36 seconds to boot up. And yes, the touchscreen does actually work fine. It is quite snappy, but it feels like a small screen Android phone. From stock, we get a few emulators already installed, but there is no Google Play. Very similar to an Amazon tablet, you'd have to sideload your own apps. It's on Android 11. We have 21 gigabytes of free space internally. And we can see here we're on build number 1.06. Unlike the Linux version, Ambernic have provided an update for this. So now we have the newest version of the firmware, we can test Android. Compared to stock, the biggest change comes with this Ambernic GUI. It looks similar to the Linux OS, but we should be able to use both Android as well as RetroArch. One big difference is we need to do a lot of setting up. As mentioned earlier, there is no Google Play Store, so as an alternative we can use APK Pure. Before we move on to the Android set of games, let's check out some benchmarks. Numbers, you seem to like numbers. I like numbers when they are from a pretty babe. <laughs> First up is Sega Rally, and it's obvious that this is playing worse than the Linux version. It's running slower, it has sound issues, and we can't control the car without changing settings. And with Killer Instinct Gold for the N64, it looks a little better, but it's still running dog slow. With the PSP, we can now change settings using the touchscreen, but yet again, there is no performance improvement over Linux. We can load up the Dolphin emulator. All of the controls are set to touchscreen, so we need to work out this Ambernic button mapper. But it is very faffy. And eventually when you get to play the game, it is super slow. And the same applies for the Nintendo Wii. It runs super slow, even though this is one of the easiest games to emulate. Next up, Slitherio. Then again, maybe not. Tallboy runs, but it showcases the problems with this machine in Android. The low resolution with this size screen is just not ideal. What is good to see is ScumVM works quite well with the touchscreen, but with this size display, I'd rather just use the analog stick. Next up is streaming with Moonlight. This actually runs quite well, but as the screen resolution does not match my monitor, we get black bars at the top and the bottom of the screen. So Android is only really used for scan VM and streaming. But if you want to play games, Linux is the way to go. We tried some input latency tests, and the values are very typical of a device this size. These were taken with the default settings, but if we wanted to reduce that further, we could use Run Ahead. In order to use the mini HDMI output, we need to insert it before we turn it on. And this is like connecting a controller straight to the TV. Here's some footage from a capture card. We can see it's working at 720p, and we can turn off bioliner filtering if we wish. Other devices to compare it to will be the 351 series. The 353 is only slightly faster, and to us, it feels more like a hardware revision rather than an actual upgrade. The dual sticks are nice for PlayStation 1, you'll have stereo speakers, and a slight boost on performance. It's time for us to get to the pros and the cons. This handheld, especially in black, looks fantastic. All of our attention is focused on the screen, and it runs up to around Dreamcast and Naomi. If you use Linux OS, it is pick up and play. Very quick to get you started. To the cons, this has long boot up times. Android seems to be an afterthought, but currently it's the only way to use touchscreen, scum VM, and streaming. We are not a fan of the gritty face buttons, and L2 and R2 are very difficult to get to. The RG353P is one of the better 4-3 aspect ratio handhelds to own. Just be aware of the limitations and the competition. To finish off, here's a quick thank you to all of those on our Patreon. 
We appreciate your ongoing support for the channel, and we will continue with more quality content. We work to fix cheap Chinese arcade boxes, and also to open up the A500 Mini. Mine certainly is not mini, it is super cute. Okay, so if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you want more, hit that subscribe. This has been Emi Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! Tar.